What's up guys and welcome back to part 3 of the reverse camera install for the W204. For this video we're going to focus solely on how to get power to your reverse camera. Now there are two ways you can actually do this. One, you can either use your rear fuse box and use a 12 volt switch power source or you can wire it to your reverse light. In my personal opinion, using your reverse light as a power source is a much better option because tapping into a 12 volt switch power source will mean that your camera will be running as soon as you switch on your ignition, thereby degrading the life of your camera because it is going to be running as soon as you switch your ignition on. So, using your reverse light as a power source is a much better option. That way your camera will only function when you engage reverse. Therefore, increasing the lifespan of your camera. In doing that, you're going to introduce maybe an issue with either fuzzy lines or something they call noise where it's going to give you an inconsistent display once you engage reverse. So in order to overcome that, you need to use something like a rectifier, a capacitor or a relay. Now, depending on what issue you're facing will depend on which method you take. To understand this, we need to understand that Mercedes has a SAM module in their car, meaning that it sends pulses through the car looking for any inconsistencies that it can find and if there are any inconsistencies it will display an error message in order to overcome this you use something like a rectifier a capacitor or a relay in order to stabilize the voltage so that you don't get that error message when you engage reverse if it's re hooked up to your reverse light in this particular case i'm using a rectifier and i'm going to show you how to wire it so let's get straight into it and just before we get started, I just wanted to show you this testing cable I've got. Now this is a really good testing cable. It's a great uh, way to test for 12 volt switched power or anything up to 48 volts. And all you have to do is connect this part here to any ground point and then use the end tip of this testing um, device and touch what power source you're trying to test and it will show you on here it will light up and it will tell you how much power you're getting through okay so for instance I'm going to connect it to this grounding point right here and now I'm going to touch a fuse and it will tell me how much voltage that fuse is getting and there you go right there it's saying 12.8 now I already know that the silver wire is in fact our reverse lights positive cable and this is in fact the negative the brown wire right here so just to show you there is no power at the moment with the car off for the silver wire as you can see now now I'm going to just put the car on the second turn so just have it in ACC in accessory mode rather than turning the car on because the last thing you want to do is turn the car on enter reverse and the car rolls back so just make sure you don't actually start the car just switch it to ignition on and then um, I'll test this uh, cable here just to show you that it is in fact 12 volts and uh, I'll begin to show you how to wire it. So I'm going to go and uh, turn the car on now. Okay now the car is on so we know that this silver wire here is in fact our reverse light so as you can see right there it is in fact 12 volts so that is definitely the wire you're going to tap into in order to get your positive power source for your uh, reverse camera. Now we know that this silver wire here is our positive cable for our reverse light. We now know how to wire it all up. For our first method, we're going to use this rectifier right here. And if you have a look, the rectifier has a in and an out. The out will connect to your camera's power source, which is the end of this plug here. So this plug will connect to the rectifiers out, positive and negative, just like this. And then your input will then connect to the positive of your reverse light and the negative. However, I'm going to strongly suggest not to tap into your actual negative cable for your reverse light. I would strongly suggest to use 
a grounding point there or the grounding point right there. Now the reason why I say that is due to the fact that Mercedes are known to have this common issue where this negative wire here can actually cause this plug harness to melt and even sometimes cause a fire due to the wire not being thick enough and too much current running through it can actually melt this cable harness so I don't recommend to actually tap directly into this negative wire instead just use a grounding point of the car like they have used here okay so remember yes you can get your positive power from this wire harness the reverse light but when it comes to connecting your negative make sure that you do not tap into this wire make sure you just use a grounding point instead so as you can see here you have your rectifier you have positive and negative out and positive and negative in the power is going to come out of the reverse light and into the rectifier and then it will push the power out of the rectifier and then into your camera so that's the easiest way for me to explain it so you can understand it in layman's terms when it comes to tapping into your silver wire now because I'm not actually going to tap into mine and I just want to show you how to do it if you just imagine this blue wire is your silver wire just use a t-tap like this simply put the t-tap where you want it and then grab a pair of pliers and crimp down and believe me that is definitely strong enough and then your positive cable from your rectifier will simply will crimp into here and you just plug this in now when you plug this in make sure that the blade does sit inside sometimes you will have the the blade will sit on top like that okay as you can see that is incorrect you need to make sure that the blade actually sits inside so that it makes a secure connection let's push it all the way in and there you have it that's exactly how you would tap into your positive cable for your reverse light do not cut it never ever cut factory wires unless you absolutely have to and if you do cut it make sure you use a soldering connection the last thing you want to do is cut a factory wire not use a soldering connection and have a error because you have fluctuations in your connection so that's very important okay and now this is the the positive side of your rectifier right here so this would simply sit in here and crimp down and you're good to go that's it that's exactly how you tap into your positive wire and then the negative would then simply be grounded to the negative points of your car so like I said you'd either use that point here or the one behind the fuse panel this one here because you want to use a grounding point that they have used that way you know it's a solid grounding point and that's it that's how you connect your rectifier if either of your cables need to be extended this is how you would extend it okay you can use a butt connector like this and a simple tool like this this is a very cheap tool you can pretty much find in most hardware stores for like maybe less than five dollars and then you find the right cable to strip your wire it has a wire stripper non-insulated crimps and insulated crimps okay so you just find the correct uh, stripper size for your wire put it in and then pull back and it will strip it for you now you just want to make sure you can strip enough so that when you actually go to um, twist your wires and fold it down that you still have enough room and then you would just twist your wires together and then fold it down once like so and then put it inside your butt connector make sure that it, it sits in the center you, if you look inside you'll be able to see where the uh, where the wire should sit simply put it inside and then because these are insulated you need to use the insulated crimping part and then simply crimp down like that 
and then you have a good connection there you go perfect and then the other side of your of your rectifier or the whatever cable you need to extend you just do the same thing you twist it twist it twist it fold it over like that like so make sure you have a good connection make sure you have a good fold over and then simply plug it in and crimp it and you're good to go now I'm not going to do that because I don't need to do it but I just wanted to show you that's how you would extend your cable and same goes for when you use these wire t-taps so you know that this goes in here after you t-tap it so in order to uh, put a cable in here fold it over and then enter it into the spade connector like so make sure that it is inside there we go and then follow the color code this is red we have red blue and yellow and then simply crimp it down like that and you just have to press down hard enough so that you get a good crimp after you crimp it make sure you pull the tug on it and make sure that it's a secure connection and that's it that's how you would extend your cable so that uh, it will reach the appropriate place now when it comes to choosing your grounding point you're going to have to connect it to something like this so that it can either sit on top of the bolt that you're using as a grounding point or if you don't know the size of it use something like a hook like a fork like this or even something like this however I'm pretty sure if you choose a much larger ring like one of these three you're going to be able to sit it on top and it's going to be fine however if you want to be sure just remove the bolt that you're using or the grounding point that you're using and measure the the size of the bolt head and and just give it a trial and error just sit it on top see if it's big enough if it's a bit too big go down one size now I also wanted to mention that when it comes to using these insulated connectors you want to just use ones that are appropriate to the cable size that you're using so when you look inside you just have to compare it to the cable size now as you can see here this one is much larger where the cable can actually sit straight through now if I went for this the red size it's much smaller and as you can see the cable will not actually sit through so you want to go with the right um, connector for your cable and all you have to do here is the same principle choose the correct stripping size wire stripping size and then strip it twist like that fold it again make sure you want to fold it that twist it and fold it down so that the copper wires have a better chance of getting a better connection because if you just leave it um, with if you just leave it and not twist it uh, it won't actually get a um, the cables won't actually uh, twist together and form a really solid connection so the reason why you twist it is so that it the the copper strings can actually uh, bind together and and ensure a better connection and then once you twist it just fold it in half like so now it's up to you you could even if you're really good at soldering you could probably even tin the end so that way it makes it a much better connection as well however you probably won't even need to do that and then all you have to do from here is like I'm just going to show you you can still use this blue one even though it's a much larger connection and then push it through use your crimper now because this is blue I'm going to go with the blue color like so see blue for blue and then simply crimp down make sure that the cable is sitting inside and crimp there we go as you can see there the cable has come down and has crimped on top of the cable and it is a secure connection there we go and now you can simply sit it now you can simply sit it over the bolt that you're using as a ground connection and then redo the bolt back on and you're good to go and that's how you um, extend your wire if you need to and also how you ground the cable to your grounding point using one of these uh, insulated connectors so if you look here as you can see there I've used a couple of um, 
rings already as a grounding point and uh, it's worked out fine as you can see there it's perfect so it's totally up to you what you decide to do however as long as you have a good grounding point and you find the correct insulated butt end uh, connectors then you're good to go and that's it that's all you need to do in order to uh, extend your wire if need be and make a ground connection there you go so if you needed to extend the cable for this you would do the same thing you would twist this cable down and then fold it over fold it over put it inside here put it inside your butt connector and then crimp it down and then that would extend your cable it's not that hard guys I mean you can buy packets of these where they have all different sorts of rings and connectors butt connectors insulated connections or you can buy ones that aren't insulated it's totally up to you however I would go for the insulated connectors that way you're given that uh, safety net of at least it being insulated that's all there is to it that's how you would extend your wire and how you would add a ring eyelet to the end of your cable so that you can ground it to your grounding point now I'm going to show you how to connect a capacitor so here we have one of the most common capacitors you can use for a reverse camera as you can see the black wire is your ground wire the blue wire is your camera's positive and the red wire will go to your reverse lights positive wire here you can see a quick demo of how you would wire it now here is another capacitor that you will find and as you can see it's very simple how you would hook it up you just have three wires to hook up you have a black red and yellow next we have another type of rectifier relay and as you can see from the next picture this is how you would hook it up it's actually pretty simple depending on the type of relay rectifier you buy will depend on how you wire it. then last but not least we have a relay so as you can see depending on the type of rectifier capacitor or relay that you use these are the diagrams of how you would wire it okay guys so as you can see here what I've done is I've just put the camera here and I've connected everything up so that it will work as soon as I enter reverse as you can see I've grounded it to this point here using my testing cable and I have just tapped into the silver wire so that it is in fact tapped into the uh, reverse light and I'm going to use this screen here just to show you guys that it all definitely works now I'm going to leave this camera here while I engage reverse and show you guys that it definitely all works So as you can see, I'm in reverse right now and you can see that the camera definitely works when I enter reverse. The camera is only a little bit shaky because it is on the rear view bar, but if I'll just dangle it a bit lower. Okay, there we go. As you can see, with the car running, there are no fuzzy lines, nothing like that. It definitely solves anything like you know any errors now just to show you that there are no errors just to show you that the car is in fact running as you can see the revs are up and we are in reverse now do not try this at home guys it is not safe I'm just doing it to show you guys that it definitely does work and now I'm just gonna go back to park that's a demonstration of how everything works the reverse camera and that brings us to the end of the video guys so as you can see there there are all different types of rectifiers, capacitors and relays. Now I did choose the most common ones so I really hope that you guys are able to find them. I'm definitely going to leave a link in the description below where you can find these uh, rectifiers and capacitors from. So if you're looking for one like that then you'll be able to find it on either eBay, AliExpress or even Amazon. They are the most common ones so I did uh, bear in mind to use the most common capacitors, rectifiers and relays and also the most affordable ones as well. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did, don't forget, smash that like button. And also don't forget that in part two of this three part series for the reverse camera install, I give details of how you can enter a random giveaway for this whole rear camera setup. So if you're interested, make sure you watch part two and 
In the video, there are details of how to actually enter this random giveaway for the reverse camera. I hope you found this video helpful, guys. And if you did, don't forget, as always, like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off.